A group of scientists specializing in vaccines released a paper saying they don't believe the general public needs a COVID-19 booster shot right now. This comes as the WHO has been calling on wealthier nations, including the U.S., to pause booster shots until more of the world is vaccinated. President Biden is set to announce more COVID-19 measures before the U.N. General Assembly meets this week. This comes as more governors and attorneys general in the U.S. push back against the sweeping mandates. And Democrat Senator Joe Manchin said that he is not going to vote for the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill. It contains initiatives on climate, social welfare and other areas. He argues that the price tag is too high. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. Amid the new vaccine mandates, the question looms, how many shots are enough? A group of scientists specializing in vaccines don't believe the general public needs a COVID-19 booster shot right now. Two Food and Drug Administration leaders, as well as other international scientists, published a paper in the medical journal The Lancet on Monday. They argue the current COVID-19 vaccine supply could save more lives if used in people who are not yet vaccinated. Researchers say they reviewed a number of trials and studies. They found that the vaccine is highly effective against both symptomatic and severe disease from the main variants. However, they also found that efficacy against symptomatic disease is somewhat less for the Delta variant. The study notes there could be risks if boosters are widely introduced too soon or too frequently, especially with vaccines that can have immune-mediated side effects. The scientists say right now more studies are needed on the variant-based boosters before there could be a widespread need for them. The study comes as U.S. federal health officials are set to announce plans for booster shots to be offered this fall. That's as the World Health Organization has urged wealthier nations not to embark on producing, distributing or mandating booster doses of COVID-19 vaccines. WHO Director General last week urged these countries, including the United States, to halt developing booster shots until the end of 2021. That's because 58% of the world's population has yet to receive one dose. And the CDC rolled out a new study that found unvaccinated people are 11 times more likely to die of COVID than those who've gotten the shot. This comes as more vaccine mandates are on the way. President Biden is set to announce more COVID-19 measures before the UN General Assembly meets this week. That's according to the U.S. Surgeon General. The president will be making announcements ahead of the UN General Assembly about additional measures that we're taking to help vaccinate the world. The next session for the UN General Assembly starts Tuesday in New York. Last week, Biden issued several executive orders, including mandating that businesses with 100 or more employees require workers to either get the vaccine or be tested weekly. It would affect about 80 million private sector employees. But Republicans say they'll file lawsuits against the mandate. Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts told Fox News on Sunday his attorney general is coordinating with others around the country. And as we see what these rules are, we will be able to know exactly how we will be able to challenge them in court. I'm also talking with uh, my uh, colleagues around the country as well, the other uh, governors who feel the way I do, and we'll be working on other strategies. Governors of Georgia and Texas have suggested they'll follow suit. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp wrote on Twitter, I will pursue every legal option available to the state of Georgia to stop this blatantly unlawful overreach by the Biden administration. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey said in a statement, the COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective tools to prevent the disease, but getting the vaccine is and should be a choice. Adding these mandates are outrageous. They will never stand up in court. We must and will push back. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem wrote on Twitter, South Dakota will stand up to defend freedom. Joe Biden, see you in court. She later shared another Twitter post saying her legal team is prepared to stand up to the Biden administration's mandates. And Florida Ron DeSantis is among the Republican governors pushing back against the mandate. In his speech Friday, Ron DeSantis fired back, saying, When you have a president like Biden issuing unconstitutional edicts against the American people, we have a responsibility to stand up for the Constitution and to fight back. Adding, and we are doing that in the state of Florida. He also called it an overreach of power, noting when officials said it was 15 days to slow the spread. He went on to say, so they have not been honest with us from the beginning on a lot of this stuff. And clearly, we have a president acting outside the bounds of the Constitution and the state of Florida. 
me as governor, I'm going to have the legislature involved as well. He went on to say, you know, we are going to fight back and offer protections. Now, as to Biden's sweeping mandates, there are exceptions. Congress and the Postal Service are exempt. While Biden said all federal employees are mandated to be vaccinated, Congress is under the legislative branch, not executive. In other words, that's outside of the president's reach. Back in April, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said there would not be a vaccine requirement for members of Congress and their staff. And a spokesman for the U.S. Postal Service, or USPS, told the Epoch Times in an email, the COVID-19 vaccination requirements included in the White House executive order issued on September 9, 2021, for federal employees do not apply to the Postal Service. Regarding other vaccination rules expected to be issued by the federal government, the Postal Service has no comment until those rules are issued and we have had a chance to review them. Over 630,000 people work for the USPS. The American Postal Workers Union, or APWU, has said in July that it's against a vaccine mandate on its workers. The statement reads, while the APWU leadership continues to encourage postal workers to voluntarily get vaccinated, it is not the role of the federal government to mandate vaccinations for the employees we represent. Issues related to vaccinations and testing for COVID-19 in the workplace must be negotiated with the APWU. At this time, the APWU opposes the mandating of COVID-19 vaccinations in relation to U.S. postal workers. Now, while vaccine passports have been popping up in several states in the U.S., what about on the other side of the pond? The British government is reversing course. It has abandoned plans to introduce so-called COVID-19 passports in England. It will also take steps to end some of its pandemic emergency powers. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson will formally set out on Tuesday his plans to manage the crisis in the winter months. Johnson's under fire from some in his Conservative Party for raising taxes to fit a health and social care crisis. Health Minister Sajid Javid said on Sunday that he did not anticipate more lockdowns and that the COVID passports would not be introduced in England. Under the plan, people would have had to use the passes to prove their vaccination status to enter some venues, such as nightclubs. The government will depend instead on vaccines and testing to defend the public. Javid also told the BBC he was not anticipating any more lockdowns, but would not take the measure off the table, and that he wanted to end PCR tests for travelers as soon as possible. The Nighttime Industries Association trade body, which represents the nightlife business, welcomed the U-turn. Now, let's go back to the United States and the question of rising taxes. Democrat Senator Joe Manchin said that he's not going to vote for the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill. Manchin told CNN on Sunday that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer won't have his vote on Biden's $3.5 trillion spending plan. He added that Schumer is aware of this and that the two have talked about it. Manchin claimed the federal government has spent too much money in recent years, and he is concerned about adding more to the national debt. He noted that Congress has already released about $5 trillion to help Americans, and that money will continue to go out until next year. And a lot of the help that we put out there is still there, and it's going to run clear until next year, 2022. What's the urgency? What's the urgency that we have? It's not the same urgency that we have with the American Rescue Plan. Manchin has said he could back a $1.5 trillion version of the bill. Yet Senator Bernie Sanders says a smaller budget reconciliation bill is unacceptable. Uh, we worked with Senator Manchin to pass the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, which was enormously consequential and helpful to working class families in getting us out of the economic a disaster that that befell us as a result of COVID. I believe we're going to all sit down and work together and come up with a $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. Meanwhile, Democrats are finding ways to pay for much of Biden's expansion of the social safety net. They propose increasing the corporate tax rate at 26.5 percent for the wealthiest businesses. It would also impose an extra tax on people who make over $5 million. So how would the increases play out? The Washington Post was the first to report on it. It would increase the tax rate for the top earners from 37 percent to 39.6 percent. That's for those earning over $435,000 a year. That would raise $170 billion over 10 years. The top capital gains rate would increase to 25 percent, that's from 20 percent, and that would raise some $123 billion dollars. 
The proposal also includes changes to what qualifies as investment income, some of which is already subject to 3.8 percent Obamacare tax, which would make the effective capital gains rate 28.3 percent, raising $252 billion. And accelerating the end of the $24 million estate tax exemption would bring in another $50 billion. Imposing an additional 3% tax on Americans who make more than $5 million would raise $127 billion. And expanded restrictions on carried interest, impacting how private equity firms compensate employees, could bring in another $14 billion. And the pharmaceutical industry could be forced to foot $700 billion of new spending by negotiating rates directly with Medicare. And now before we end, Bentley unveiled a new $2 million car, and it does not have a roof. It's called the Bacalar. Only 12 are being made, and they are already spoken for. The all-wheel drive Bacalar has a turbocharged 650 horsepower, 12-cylinder engine. The lack of a roof is all about aesthetics. Unlike a convertible, designers didn't have to find a place to hide a folded top and latching mechanisms. A Bentley spokesman says without a roof, designers could make the flow of the cabin go into the contour of the exterior. Now, as for those wondering about the rain, Bentley doesn't seem worried. Some note for those who can't afford to spend $2 million on a car, the assumption is they have other cars to drive around in the rain. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.